Hey, what's going on, y'all? I'm back with another episode, and this time, got a real special guest. Got Jay the Barber, owner of Self Made Cuts, right here in Las Vegas. And I know it took us a minute to kind of put this one down, but I'm glad we finally got a chance to sit down and chop it up. Um, I appreciate you taking the time to come out and you know do this, but uh, let the people know. Who you are, where you from, and what you do. All right, so my name is Jay, um, owner and you know, creator of Self Made Cuts Barbershop, Luxury Barbershop. Um, I'm from Vegas. You know, this is home. This is where I'm from. This is a city. I love the city. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm an entrepreneur, you know, I'm a businessman, and um, yeah. All right, so you've been, you've been cutting my hair and my son's hair. Um, since we moved out here for about what four years or so now, and and, it, and it's cool to watch you grow. Uh, you know, just kind of do your thing and just kind of looking and seeing how you started. But how do you separate yourself from other barbers out there? Oh man, that's a good question. Um, you know, I, I, I believe when I named myself and my brand Self Made Cuts, I believe that gave me uh, a sense of independence and individuality. And I try to separate myself by doing things that other people are just uncomfortable with doing or just don't think is, is important. You know, like customer service, you know, being punctual, being consistent, you know, having pride, what I do, trying to make sure that the things that I do is going to actually make sense, you know, for myself and my brand. And regardless of where I'm at or where I'm doing it from grocery shopping, getting gas, washing my car, I try to remember that, like, you know, you're a businessman. Right, carry yourself like you're, you're you're a walking Walmart. Yeah, you know you don't see Walmarts tagged up. You know, right. <laughs> so it's like I try to look at myself as yeah. a brand everywhere I go. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah, that's cool, man. Um, you know, I dig it. But but what like what made you um want to become a barber in the first place? Like, how did you get your start? Oh man, that's a deep one too. Because um, my cousin used to cut my hair, and. When I was younger, I used to go to the barber shop. You know, I was just get obsessed with everything in the barber shop. My mom, you know, take him to the barber shop at eight o'clock in the morning for an eight thirty appointment, and he putting all his homeboys in front of me. I'm not getting cut until six thirty seven o'clock at night. So, you know, my moms would get mad, but I was enjoying myself. You know, I'm getting to see guys interact. I didn't have an older brother. Didn't really have a father figure. So for me, just being in that male dominant environment and seeing the ups, the downs, the positivity, the love, you know, and then my older cousin, you know, um, you know, he was a fly dude, always looked good, smelled good, had money. And I'm like, bro, I, 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 I want that. Yeah. I want that lifestyle. You know, I want the, I want to be the guy that get love and that's respected. Right. I want to have nice things. I want to enjoy my life. And, you know, that is what started it. But then it grew into something so much bigger and better. Oh, okay. Yeah, man. So, um, I hope I ain't putting you on the spot. <laughs> Cause I should have, I should have gave you the questions, but man, you know, uh, beforehand, man. But, uh, but, uh, so how did you, you come up with self made cuts? You know, like self made cuts was honestly given to me by, you know, a deep depression state I was in. You know, a, a lot of people, you know, me and you've been rocking for a while now, and I, I appreciate that. Yeah. But, you know, right into the becoming of me and you, you know, I was going through some, some stuff, man. And um, I felt like I didn't have nobody, and, you know, and I felt, you know, I, I was needed answers. I needed money. I needed help. And, right. you know, I went through some stuff and I had to figure it out myself. And it was like, you know what? Uh, Rick Ross, that came out with a song, and you know, it was like self-made, self-made. Oh, like, yeah, bro, yeah. I remember that. Yeah. I got to do this to myself. I'm self-made. None of y'all damn helped me. Y'all all turned y'all back on me. Right. Y'all all said I couldn't do it. Y'all all said it was a dream and, you know, yeah. you need to do something else. Yeah. Yeah, I know how that is, man. Yeah. Especially when I was p- pumping out this, uh, when I got started podcasting, you know, everybody kind of joking, you yeah. know, about, you know what I'm saying? Like, Nobody right, never well, believed right, vision okay. until it's done and they can see it. <laughs> I know you can do it, boy. I, I knew you, man. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, when I first started doing this, man, I was like, well. Like all right, you know, ain't nobody really listening because, and then you know, back then I didn't have all that equipment. I was recording on my phone. Exactly. You know? <laughs> I had some cheap Walmart clippers that were really some peanuts. Yeah, they weren't doing nothing, man. But I just knew when I see yeah. the vision, if I if I kept at it. Yeah, know? man. Yeah, and so so that's what you know, kind of like I, you know, I watch. Like I said, man, I watch you kind of grow. Like 
you know, I seen the whole ups and downs, man, you know, with the whole thing, man. When you was like, I know that time when you had posted on Instagram, I think you were at like, uh, I think you were still at the barber school over there uh-huh. or something like that where you was going down to get your license. Yeah. And you, you didn't pass the test. Oh, man. That and would that, hurt me. Yeah. So how so how did you overcome that, man? Because I know that, is a, you know, it's a, it's a big setback. You know oh, what I'm saying? Oh, man. That, that hurt me. And it was a setback um, in a major way. You know, I'm still recovering from it. But, you know, it's ups and downs with life. And, you know, it comes with it. But that was one of the ones that was like a blind shot. I think I just got so... Overwhelmed with confidence Overconfident you know, Yeah 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 I was yeah, gonna yeah. knock it out I was gonna do yeah. what you know this Man I'm about to get everything I yeah. told y'all I was gonna get And I think I probably got a little bit Too cocky and too full of myself And I just didn't Prepare myself the way I should have Knowing right. that You know It's still an action exam And you have to pass it Oh and yeah You don't You know and Yeah <laughs> Sheesh Man That was a dark one too Yeah man I, Cause I remember that man. I was like damn You know That one like, hurt bro, bro. I was I'm like, be shit. real bro I bought the paper up I called my mama crying I was hot Damn. I was hot. I was like, yo, I failed this test. This yeah, what you yeah. Mean? You failed. I said, like, man, I failed. They, they said I did not pass. Damn, bro. Yeah, because I was like, damn, you know. Because I, I think when when you had put it on, I think Instagram or something. I think I had just, we had just got a haircut, and you were talking about going down there taking the test. Yeah. I'm like, damn. I sat on it for like a good two, three days. Yeah, you know, I'm watching dudes I went to school with posting theirs, and I pass. I'm a mama. I'm like, man. <laughs> Hell, this barber school, man. I know I should have said something else, bro. You were wasting time. Yeah, man. You know those those setbacks, man. You know we we have them, and you know I guess I don't know, man. I guess that's like a test. You know what I'm saying to see if you really want what you want. You know what I'm saying if you really want it, you know you're gonna do whatever it takes to get it. You know, you know, pass or fail. Like if you fail, all right, okay, that's a setback. Then you just bounce back from it. You know what I'm saying. So that's how I look at it, man. You know, but um, so. So what does the future look like for self-made cuts? You know, I know you were talking about um, uh, doing something in the future because, you, you know, you felt like there there wasn't like that many dope barbershops up here where we at in, in North Las Vegas. Um, so, so I mean, what does the future kind of look like, you know? Um, for me, the future of self-made cuts and the brand as a whole is to really try to change the narrative of what a barbershop is. Okay. You know, somehow throughout the industry of beauty and cosmetics, right? Barbershops get the bad tone. Yeah. We're the ones that's supposed to be turned up, yeah, doing this and selling this and doing that. When you know, back in the day, uh, a barbershop was a prestige place. Right. Everybody right. couldn't get a haircut. Exactly. So you talking about businessmen getting haircut and suits and ties and the barbers and suit and ties. Right. Now, not to say that that's what I want to do in 2021, <laughs> but I mean, I yeah. do want to bring back that upscale barbershop, and I want it to be known that this is an urban black males barbershop. Right. I Meaning all races can come, but that's what our focus is going. To be and right. discussing and talking about things that you know are happening in the black community and that we need to be talking yeah. about, and um, you know, I, I just wanted to be different. I really want to change that narrative that you can come to a barbershop, get excellent customer service, a dope haircut, and the environment is clean, it's nice, it's sanitary, yeah. it's respectful. Right, you can bring your wife or your grandmother in there and still enjoy the service and the amenities that's in there for everyone, for everybody, yeah, and it not be this negative content of, Oh, you going to a barbershop. It's like, you know, I, I just don't like that narrative. And, you know, I pride myself on my brand and what I do. And, you know, I want to change that. And oh. I want people to understand that. Right. Okay. No, nah, that's cool, man. Yeah, I I, I feel it, man. Because, you know, I was telling you about when I first got out here, man, with a barbershop, man. <laughs> how I dealt with them dudes. How they, you know, like, I called down there and they were like, yeah, come on down. We, we, you know, we'll cut you here, you know. And then I get down there. And them dudes, man, had me sitting down there for like an hour, bro. Yeah. Like, and I'm like, yeah. The, the the problem the problem with it is now too is that you know somehow you know we've gotten saturated with barbers. Yeah. And everybody's not necessarily a barber for the right reasons. Okay. Same reason why people get in relationships. You get in relationships for the wrong reasons. Right. Right. A lot of guys get into barbering because they see you know a flashy barber or the lifestyle or the money. And like, yeah. Oh, I can do that. That's easy. I don't got no balls. You know. I can do what I want. Right. But it's so much more than that, and there's so many sacrifices that you have to make to actually establish and get yourself to some of these points. Right. A lot of people are just not willing to do it. And the sucky part for the client is, you go in looking for a haircut in the barber, yeah. and you sit down in the hustler's chair. 
right, the hustler. Right. He's just trying to get your money out your pocket as fast as he right. can yeah. and get the next dude in. And because of that, you lack customer service. Right. You lack yeah. the quality. You lack the detail. You lack the things that actually make the haircut and make the person not right. only want to go in his pocket and give you what he owes you for your service, but also give you twenty, thirty, forty, fifty dollars extra because he just appreciates your time, your right. service, and your effort that you put into his haircut. Yeah. No, I, man, I, I get it, man, because I, you know, I come from a, a customer service background, man. I used to work, uh, like I was telling you earlier before we started recording, I used to work at uh, the county back home in Atlanta. I used to work fourth and county uh, back home in Atlanta doing like tags and uh, property taxes and stuff. And so it was always this customer service element behind it because, you know, we didn't have anything to gain except for people paying their taxes. You know what I'm saying? So it was like, well. Outside of that shit We're not getting Nothing extra So Customer service Is gonna be like The number one thing For us You know what I'm saying So Yeah I feel what you're Talking about man Cause, But them dudes man I was like Damn like I Sat there And then I was like You know I just got up And walked out bro Like I left <laughs> And the sad thing Is that happens To a lot of people It happens to a lot of people And I feel so bad When I get clients That come in and like, Man I have been here For two years And you the best bar I done found This, this is the dope yeah. one I done found bro You won't believe What I done been through Yeah man It's like Golly It's like coming to a relationship With somebody with a lot of baggage it's Right like, Oh my god We got a lot to fix Yeah <laughs> man You know yeah. Stuff, Everything Yeah man I mean I, I just, Like I said I just know it's something That I dealt with When I first got here man And uh I don't know, man. It was just weird. I'm like, bro, y'all ain't trying to get no money. Like, I got money over it's here, bro. Like, customer service, you know what I'm saying? That is, that is yeah. a big part of barbering, customer service. Yeah, man. So, um, but yeah, so just to kind of switch it up, man. Who you got, AFC or NFC? No, well, you know I'm at. Uh, you know what? Uh, see, that was a trick question. Normally, you, you know, I, 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 I was, I'm from Vegas, you know what I'm saying, a native, but uh, the first team I started liking was the Philadelphia Eagles back in the Brian Dawkins and Javon Kurz, yeah. and, you know, them boys, so that was my first <laughs> team, but I'm loyal to my soil, man, and being from <laughs> Vegas and you go somewhere, I hate people asking me about casinos, Yeah, and I hate that everywhere got a football team, so now we got the Raiders, Yeah, so it's like, man, you know, I really want to rock on the last year, they're still in Oakland, but now, or the year before, but now they're actually yeah. here, we got fans, we can go, you right. know, so it's like, man, I'm slowly but surely turning into a Raider fan right now, bro. Yeah, I, I know, I know, bro, and that's the thing, you know, because, you know, me being from Atlanta, it's like... Yeah, I'm staying out here now, but I'm like, damn, yeah. man, you know, I, I got, I feel like I got to kind of represent. Yeah, it's like, bro, you can't be a Philly fan, and I ain't never even been to Philly. I just think they, they was just dope. But yeah, no, man. I don't know. But that's why I hit you with that question because I, I knew you were a Phillies fan, so I was yeah. like, yeah, man, you yeah. know. <laughs> but uh, but the AFC though, the AFC looking stacked though. I mean, think about it, like they yeah. like all their teams like. You got what Kansas City You got Kansas Buffalo, City Buffalo Buffalo Tennessee yeah, I hate to admit it But you got the Browns Yeah they, They're gonna be solid. And then you know what I think people yeah. are Underestimating the Patriots Really you think so oh, Boy them, I, Hey we don't take The Patriots They're um, They making the playoffs they You you think the, Yes Yes Oh man yes. I haven't even thought about this I think Bill Belichick Got a point to prove And then at the end of the day It's like Tom Brady He left and he did The ultimate ego stroke He went and won the Super Bowl With oh. a whole new team The first year Right And you didn't make the playoffs It's already that whole debate Who was the most important piece Oh who, yeah Yeah You know I don't know if they're gonna win The Super Bowl I would. I honestly would love to see Cam Newton win the Super Bowl And with the Patriots I think that would be dope yeah, so that would could, that would be dope. Yeah, I don't. I'm not gonna say that, but I definitely think they're gonna make the playoffs, and I definitely think they're gonna end up putting somebody out the playoffs that we expect them to make it. Mm, yeah. See, I already had my thing. Like in the, in the AFC, I already had. I was like, yeah, you know what, Kansas City, and then I, man, I like, I like, I really like Tennessee, and I, I was on Tennessee. I'm like, all right, Tennessee, I, I, I can rock with them, especially now since the Fal uh, the Falcons what traded with Julio Jones. Yeah. Talk okay, like so let me, do you, who you think gonna fall off in the AFC then? Ooh. I think the Steelers going. I think the Steelers falling off. Yeah, you know what? Yeah, I was talking with somebody about that the other day. Yeah, Roethlisberger. Yeah, he that eleven and zero star yeah. was a fluke. Yeah, that, that was a fluke. Yeah, you're right. That's gonna happen. You're right. Yeah, I didn't even think about that. I forgot about. I'm Pittsburgh. sorry, y'all, yeah. my Steelers clients that's gonna hear this, bro. I'm not hating, but <laughs> bro, I, I forgot all about that shit, bro. Yeah, Big Ben is now Uncle Ben. He should retire. Yeah, you know what? Because I was talking with somebody about that the other day, and I forgot they brought up Pittsburgh. Cause they were like, yeah, yeah. Like shit. I'd rather go <laughs> off the last thing I saw first the first thing. The last yeah. few games I saw, boo boo. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. You're right. You're right. But um, shit. Let's, yeah. So, so you're originally from Las Vegas, man. So tell me, like, I guess what the vibe is like now and how it's changed since you grew up here. You know what I'm saying? So how has that vibe changed versus how you know you grew up and how everything is now? Because you know you got you got a lot of transplants in the city. My like, I'm a transplant, so <laughs> yeah. I mean, um, man, growing up, Vegas was different for me. You know, it's it's weird to see um, celebrity or not even celebrities, but tourists come out here or clients or people that I meet, and they just so excited to get to Vegas. And like, I understand <laughs> it because it's Vegas. Yeah. But growing up out here, it's like it's a whole different lifestyle than what they show on the movies and TV. Right. And it was like, um, you know, you don't really appreciate it that much when you're a kid, or at least I didn't. Yeah. You know, so I didn't appreciate Vegas as much as I do now, being an adult, being a business owner and trying to grow and trying to create opportunity and legacy for my kids right. and my family. Right. So, you know, I look at it different, you know, now, but, you know, growing up, um, you know, it was it was a lot of desert. You know, the city has expanded <laughs> a lot. Yeah. So it was like, if anything, that makes me proud to see how much we have grown, how many people that moved out here. Right. You know, it was a lot a long time that, uh, you know, North Las Vegas and certain parts of the West Side, you know, Rose was bad. It wasn't nothing on Craig. It was desert forever. Oh, really? So it's like, it's dope to drive down Craig or, you know, Centennial or Rome or one of these streets they done made. Yeah. And it's just a whole little nice, you know, housing development. And it's not that negative content. It's North Las Vegas. It's like, you know, it's a nice, respectful yeah. area. Yeah. You know, now that's the thing, man, because when I first got out here, folks like, where you live at And I was like North Las Vegas They was like You stay in North Town I'm like Yeah like, For a long I'm like, time what? They try to paint A real bad narrative Of North Las Vegas But at the end of the day Honesty is like You know We were somewhat segregated And y'all just wasn't Investing money in over here you know, oh, it, it was Henderson, old Henderson, New yeah. Henderson, Summerlin, Summerlin, yeah. You know, uh, uh, Blue Diamond. You know, all these other different places that they were putting money at, and you know, developing mm-hmm. besides these spots. You know, the street that I grew up on uh, was um, Alexander, and it's like, oh, okay. Um, you know, Alexander and Walnut area. Yeah, man, this street was bad for decades. I mean, I'm talking about potholes, dips, and bumps. Yeah. Uh, Amazon decided to build a warehouse right there. Oh, and yeah. They fixed the whole damn street in a week. Fixed the wow. whole street, replaced the park. <laughs> That's said, crazy, you, bro. But in reality, is y- y'all just did what, you know, investors do. Y'all found the cheapest piece cheapest of property. Cheapest piece of property, yeah. Y'all built on it, and now you're going to make the property value go up. That benefits you. Right. And everybody else that stays over there will still get what they've been getting, which is nothing. Nothing. And it's going to stay like that. Wow. So that's where you get the North Las Vegas, bad North Las Vegas, and then the new yeah. North Las Vegas. And okay. All that other nonsense. Yeah, I just, yeah, I was just wondering because I'm like, everybody I talk, oh, you stand up, they, they turn their nose up. And I'm like, uh, like, what, what's going on? Ain't nothing, you know, you stay up there, you stay there. I'm like, yeah, like, yeah, like yeah, shit is cool to me. It's a peaceful spot for me, man. Yeah, you it's know. a cool spot. So I'm like, you stay, they like, oh, you stay in North Town? I'm like, what? Like, all right, man. Well, like I'm like, well, but um, but yeah, man. The weather like out here. That's that's what got me, man. Like, you know, being from Atlanta, man, we got a lot of humidity down there, and uh, it's dry. <laughs> so out here, you know, it's, it's a big dry. difference, man. Plus, you know, no state taxes. That's what I yeah. like to. <laughs> <laughs> I think everybody live out here like that. But if you don't know what that means, move to Cali. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, man. So yeah, but you know, I look at this thing like you know, um, like you know, you being an artist, you know, because it, it takes, you know, it takes a lot of skill to do what you do. Yeah. So you know, it's an art. You know, what I'm saying art takes skill. So how do you keep your skills up to par? And like, do you read any type of literature that's related to your craft, or how do you keep your skills sharp? Um, a little bit of both, man. You know, anytime a barber or somebody in the barber's industry comes out with a dope book or something dope that's, you know, enlightening or educational that can make me better, I try to consume it and I try to really study it and figure out what I can do mm-hmm. from it. I, I really don't like to copy no one's techniques or their style right. or what they say, but I'm not, you know, arrogant to the point where I can't take something that you do right. that I can use, find useful for myself and use it in a constructive way to make me better. So it's not necessarily, you know, trying to, you know, go word for word for what somebody else is doing or saying. Okay. But it's just taking little tips and always just being trying to learn. I think the biggest mistake you can do as a barber is get complacent and like, you know, I made it. I got money. I got cocktail, right. Right. Yeah. You know, I'm dope. You know, I can get a taper. I can do a lineup. It's like <laughs> it's constantly changes every day. Social yeah. media changed the game. Right. You know, it's another barber somewhere else in the world. And he's doing a dope haircut right now. And that thing is going viral. 
You got wow. clients that come in with expectations that now if you can't do it, you can't do it. But at the end of the day, you still find what you can do, and you know you just make it better. Make it better, right? So Damn. You know, it's, it's a lot of stuff from YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. You know, yeah, any and everywhere, man. It's a lot of it's a lot of guys you know from the city I look up to. You know, shout out Twix the barber, um, okay. Marcus Allen the barber. Um, it's, it's, it's or excuse me, they, they Twix are, Twix is a Fatal Mall barber shop. Mm-hmm. And uh, Marcus is a uh, masterpiece one, two, and three, and the barber school which I went to. You okay, know, these are some guys you know that really influenced me, and I got a lot of respect for in the barber game because I mean these guys, you know, they own businesses, they own homes, and that's what it's about. Oh, it's, yeah, you know, it, that you, you can cut hair and, and just cut hair all day, right? But at the end of the day, that man, that's not a knock on anybody. That's like working a regular nine to five that has no future. Yeah, you know, I know, if you're right? Working somewhere that's not going nowhere. You have to do something. You gotta do something. Yeah, and that's and that's where I'm kind of at right now, man. With my whole situation, you know, that whole I'm like, man, every job that I got, because everybody like, oh, you can't keep bouncing around. You don't never get no longevity nowhere. But well, I'm like, man, if I'm here for like a year and I ain't like moving nowhere, man. then I'm bouncing. And I, I commend you on that because it took me ten years to do it, bro. You know, what I worked at a job for ten years, and it was like yeah. it was cool, but it just it just wasn't taking me nowhere. Yeah, I feel you, man. I feel like you know, we we all got we all got a life, man. You got to yeah. go out and take it. Go out, out and time. take that shit. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. man, that that whole nine to five, forty hour work week, man. That shit just I don't know. For me, it's just. Like I'm, I'm like I mean, I'm it's over good it. for some I mean, people. yeah, it's and good. It's like, yeah. I don't want to seem like I, yeah. I, I knock it. I think some people think that sometimes when I say like self made or you know they like oh well don't knock me because I got jobs like bro I'm not knocking first of all being self made is a mindset right anybody right. can be self made it's just loving what you do having passion for what you do and being creative and responsible for the things that you do and if you do that and it gives you a great outcome then that makes you self made in my opinion right so it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to you know have a, a business a or business, not work right. for someone yeah but at the end of the day like I said if you're doing anything you feel like there's no growth in it or you can't grow then it's like you have to change that mm-hmm. and overcome that right and continue constantly try to grow and expand and get better and get more. Yeah, no, nah, man, I, I feel you, man. Like I said, that was like my whole situation. That's why I started doing this, man, as an outlet. You know what I'm saying? And uh, you know, I mean, that's just kind of you know the whole thing, man. Just kind of you know doing that as an outlet to 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 get away from that whole you no know, situation. So you know, so yeah, man. Um, like tell everybody where they can uh where they can find you at. Like you know, you like your Instagram. Uh, you can find me on Instagram at Self Made Cuts J the Barber. Um, pretty much all social media social media outlets are the same username. Self Made Cuts J the Barber. Uh, my books here, Self Made Cuts J the Barber. You can find me online at Google dot com. Okay. Self Made Cuts J the Barber. Everything is self made. Branding is so important. There's no need to change your <laughs> name to try to fit in or fit a certain narrative. If you have a business, that's what you're going to push, then that should be your name. Yeah, every major corporation and company pushes their name and their brand, and until you do it, people won't respect you. Okay, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, yeah, man, that's what's up, man. So, uh, yeah, man, everybody out there that's listening, um, if you ever in Las Vegas, more specifically North Las Vegas, or just in Vegas general, man, you need to come check him out, man. Like I said, he been cutting my hair and my son's hair for about four years now. Yeah, shoot, and it's a pleasure, uh, man. Appreciate you. I mean, to me, he's the dopest out here. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I always appreciate it, but it's like I'm not gonna say because like I, I respect the goats. I respect yeah. the goats. It's a lot of love, but okay. I do love being mentioned among them. So right, it makes me feel like I'm doing right. something right. Okay, yeah, for sure. All right, so uh, you got anything like any last uh, I don't know word you want to say to the people because this is going like. Overseas too like. I mean man <laughs> Failure is never an option Success is just a process Embrace your failures Grow from them Learn from them And become better And never quit man Go go for you, go for what you want We all go through stuff We all got stuff going on Everybody got baggage You know You gotta accept it Move on with it And put it on your back man And keep going bro Don't yeah. quit You know Life is rough Alright man So there you have it And um, I want y'all to go over And uh, check out his page Follow him um, like you know, whatever you got to do to to make sure he show he pop up in your timeline, and then um, just make sure you subscribe, share, and download this from whatever podcasting platforms you listen uh, to podcasts on. I know you got Google Podcast, Apple Podcast, Spotify, um, so all those places. And until next time, 
I want y'all to take care of each other, take care of yourselves, and I'll see you on the next episode. Peace.